All right, boys. So today what we're going to first start off with is finding roots. And then once we get this mode of thinking down packed, we're going to move on to something called roots of unity. <clears throat> but the way in which we're going to do this guy over here is we're going to look at this as a test case and then this as an extension case. Now, looking at this guy over here, you want to solve z squared equals 1 for all possible values of z. Now, as a good year 8 student, you know how many solutions do you expect to see here, Mr. Leishman? Two. Two, because if we said z squared equals 1, the way in which we solve this is we just square root both sides. So it becomes z equals square root of 1. So we're square rooting both sides. And we know that if we square root both sides, what do we automatically put in front of this guy here? Plus, one. plus or minus. So the answers to this guy are plus or minus one. Now looking at this along the number line, and we'll say we're on the real number line. If this is zero, this would be one, this would be minus one. So we're going zero, one, negative one. So there and there. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. All right, so typically speaking, when we're looking at square rooting a number, how many solutions do we expect to see? Two. two. So square root, we expect to see at least two solutions. Now, let's have a look over here. Cube root. We want to do the same. We say the z cube of 27, we want to solve for z. So we're going to say z then cube root of 27 and that will give us 3. 3. Plus or minus 3? Just 3. Just 3. Just the 1. Quite lonely. And looking at this on the real number line, then we're going to expect to see 0, 3, and just a positive one. Seem good? We're happy with that? Seems like reasonable content for today. Mm -hmm. But there's more. Let's have a think. What if I said find the fourth root of, let's say, 81? So if we had z to the 4 equals 81, what would that equal, just looking at it? It's just 3. But is that just regular 3 or is it? It's plus or minus 3. How many solutions here? 2. 2. But could there be more? What if we said 3i? plus or minus. Would that work? Yes. So there's actually how many solutions? Four. Four solutions. Now, what we come to this realization here is that when you have a square root, there's two solutions. When you have a fourth root, there's four solutions. So how many solutions should we expect to see for a cube root? Three. Three. So for whatever degree the polynomial you're working with, you expect to see that many solutions, even if they're complex. The reason why these ones here aren't immediately obvious that there's three solutions is purely because they are complex. And that's what we're gonna show how to solve today. By example, first over here and then over here. This is good for a year eight level. So that's year eight. But we're going to do the spec method. Let's start again. Let's go z squared equals one. 
Now, rather than solving from here, what we're going to do is we're going to do a transformation. Rather than working in Cartesian form or rectangular form, let's work in polar form. So, in its polar form, 1 is over here, which means that it's got a modulus of 1. It's got an angle, so cis of 0. Do we agree? Next, <laughs> let us get every possible solution, even if they're repeated. Let's go 1, cis, 0, and then let's keep going around the circle. So we'll go plus 2, k, pi. Just like that. Where k is going to be any integer number, even a negative one. Now, this is still z squared. Let's use the Mauvoise theorem to solve or to reverse this square here. So we'll square it both sides so this will become z and this over here is going to become cis 2k pi all to the power of a half. Using the Mauvoise theorem we get cis 2, 2k pi Hence, this is going to be cis k pi. Okay, here's the magic. We said that k is any integer number, but how many solutions are we expecting if we're in order 2 to equation 2? Which values of 0 do you reckon we'll pick? Let's just go 0 and 1. Therefore, cis of 0. There was always going to be our first solution when we're in year 7. And here comes the solution when we're in year 8. Cis of 0 is 1. Cis of pi is negative one. So this guys is the algebraic method of actually determining all of our roots within an equation that's of higher than order one. Let's use that same model over there to find every single root for this cubed equation. Starting off we define our z cubed as equal to 27. We then change this into what form, Patrick? Polar. Polar. Where k is a integer number, could be positive or negative. Next, this is going to be cube root of 27, cis 2k pi. Moving down, this will be 3 cis 2k pi over 3. And what values of k are we going to pick here? Zero to two, or three to three, four, five, doesn't matter. Just pick three consecutive numbers. Therefore, Z is going to be three, six, zero. There's your first solution. Three, six, two K over pi, or two K over three, two pi over three, or Two pi over whoops not that four pi over three. Now this guy's outside the domain, do we worry about it? Only if it asks you to give the solution in polar form. 
that does not spring in polyform, don't worry about it. All right, so putting this back into Cartesian form, our first value or first root is three, and our second root is going to be negative three plus three i root three all over two. And then our final root, I don't need to put it in the calculator. Do we remember the fundamental rule of um, complex algebra when finding roots? Yeah, they're repeated, but if you have one complex root, they always come in pairs of conjugates. So if you know what one is, you know what another one is. So there's our three roots there, guys. So the takeaway from here is that for whatever order of equation we're working with, there are as many roots as the order. So an order two will give us two distinct roots as a solution. Similarly, an order three will give us three distinct roots. It just so happens that when we're dealing with the cube roots, they are on the imaginary axis and they are something like that. So these two, that's one there and one there. I won't draw it in because it's a bit messy. The other thing that we should take away from here is if there's two roots, what's the spacing between them? Pi radians. Spacing between here. How many radians in a revolution? Two. Two pi over three. <laughs> Two pi over three. Two pi over three. So if you know <coughs> this guy over here, you can actually just give a 2 pi over 3 radians as an argument, and you'll find the second row. Any questions? Seem reasonable from what we already know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to leave this part here for now. This is the stuff we need to practice for a bit in, let's say, 15 minutes' time when we're familiar with all the steps. I'll show you where we add to this, the final part of the course for this topic.